Dear beloved in the Lord, may God strengthen you with your, in your faith each and every day, and I invite you to please join me in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for giving us, the, your people of old, for giving us the, your prophets in the Old Testament and your teachers in the Old Testament, for giving us your Son for his guidance. And Lord, we pray that this day that you might guide us in each of our steps and each of our ways, that we truly might bring honor to your holy name. Lord, lift up our hearts before you, that they may be cleansed and made clean, that we may go forth reflecting your love. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Excuses, excuses, excuses. We've all heard them. We've all used them. We're used to them. Now, I won't judge right now which excuses are legitimate or which are illegitimate. You happen to know yourself. But as you think about the excuses you've made in your life, I want you to think for a moment about why you made those excuses. I want you to think about how those excuses made things turn out, affected your life. You know, we make excuses for a number of different reasons, but I think there's oftentimes a regular why reason. Some of you guys will, you make excuses, oh, children, to your parents, to your teachers, for not having your homework done on time, for not having your chores done, for not being in before your curfew. Some of you parents, you make excuses to your children or have made excuses to your children for missing a soccer game or missing a school play, not making it on time somewhere. Some of you spouses, uh, husbands to your wives, wives to your husbands, you, you've made excuses because you've forgotten things, uh, a birthday, an anniversary to pick up the dry cleaning. Some of you have made excuses to police officers. I swear I did not see that light turn red. I was not going that fast. I, really? Some of you make excuses to your doctors. I've been exercising a little. I've been eating better. Hmm. Some of you make excuses even to God. Well, I just didn't have time this week to pray. I didn't have energy to, to, lead, to, to pray with my kids before they went to bed. I didn't have time to get into the Word this week or do my devotions. It's okay, right, God? We make excuses all over the place, don't we? And I don't know if I can say that we're in good company, but we certainly are in company with Moses, who also made excuses, didn't he? We go back to our text in Exodus chapter 3, and that's exactly how Moses responds to God. Now here, God comes to Moses in a burning bush. And I don't know about you, but if God came to me in a burning bush, I'd like to think I'd listen pretty intently. Although I'm fairly honest with myself as well, and the realist in me says that probably I'd be just as much a sinner. Isn't that true? Why we make so many excuses to God. As much as we'd like to think that we're on board, good Christian people, we, those excuses seem to come easier. They seem to come faster than, yes, Lord. Whatever you say, Lord, I will do it. Moses, see, he didn't know what God had in mind for him. He made these excuses before realizing just what the Lord had in mind. See, it, it, probably you remember the story, so I don't have to take you all the way back through it, but Moses had been a sheep herder. He was looking after his father-in-law's sheep after he had fled from Egypt 40 years earlier. He was shepherding those sheep, but God had a greater plan. God, from the beginning, had a greater plan for him. Remember, he spared Moses' life, raised him up in Pharaoh's household. He, used Mo he was going to use Moses to deliver his people, not only to be a shepherd of sheep, but to shepherd his people. But Moses, he was full of excuses. In fact, if we go back to the text, we see his first response. God said, well, go to Pharaoh's household. I'll be with you. Moses says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? God says, well, I'll be there. Don't worry. Well, what about the people? What if they reject me? If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Excuses. It's easy to make excuses. It seems like a lot of times because I think for Moses, for many of us, because we fear failure. We fear letting someone else down. We make these excuses to parents, to your kids, because you don't want to let them, let them down. Kids to your parents because you know what you're supposed to do and you don't want to let them down. It, to your bosses, when you don't get a job done on time, you make these excuses because, well, you don't want to let them down. Maybe in the same way we make these excuses to God because... Well, we fear our failures more than we fear Him. 
We fear letting Him down more than we fear God. And I mean fear in a couple of different ways here. Not just fear in the sense of fear and awe, wonder, amazement, but fear in who God is. It's important that we look at God and we remember who He is. It's important that we look at God and we think about His expectations for us. It's an uncomfortable thing for us to do when we go back and look at God as He led His people in the Old Testament. As we look at God and we look at just what it means to call Him God Almighty. See, we use many different adjectives to describe God. But we don't really talk so much about Him because we don't know a lot about Him. He's incomprehensible. But we call Him Almighty. His strength. His, his weakness is greater than our greatest strength. We call Him all-knowing. Our wisdom, our greatest wisdom, is foolishness to Him. He spoke creation into existence by His very words. We speak and oftentimes it turns out to be gossip or just jabbering on. He created. And He made wonderful, beautiful creation. But He's also righteous. He is just. He is holy. He is righteous, just, and holy, and we are anything but. In fact, the truth is we really don't have an excuse. All of our excuses as we stand before God, all of our justifications before Him, that's all they are, and they originate from our sinful lives. They originate from our sinful human nature. They originate from who we are. Excuses truly come from a lack of faith. Instead of confessing as we should in the first commandment and living out the first commandment, you should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We fear the world, our failure. Instead of trusting in God above all things, we trust in ourselves and count on our own abilities. Instead of loving God above all things, we love the comfortable lives we live. Isn't that why we make these excuses? Isn't that why we do it? It's because it's easier. Well, if we were to listen to the voice of God in our lives, if we were to take that step in faith, think about it. You wouldn't even know what is ne coming next because that's what a step of faith is. It's going out not knowing what is coming next. It's going out not knowing what God has in store and what He has in mind. And sometimes, like Moses, it's scary and it's dangerous and it's treacherous and whew, amazing. But we're scared. And we're comfortable. And so we make excuses. We make excuses as to why we why we can't serve Him or why we can't share our faith. We make excuses why we can't forgive someone else or why we can't be the father or mother to our children that we need to be, our grandparents to our grandchildren. And when we stand before God, our righteous judge, we have no excuse, no justification. We come before Him as sinners, as failures. We come before Him as those who have not lived up in any way, shape, or form to His law. We come before Him knowing the judgment we deserve. Because His righteous judgment calls us to be righteous and we are not. But God didn't decide to make excuses for you. He didn't decide to make excuses for me. He didn't decide to pretend that really everything you're doing, it's all right. Instead, God, instead of making excuses, made payment. He made payment for your sins. He made payment for my sins. He made payment for all sins through His giving of His body and blood on the cross. God didn't just pretend that our sins were not there, but instead He confronted your sins and my sins. He confronted them on the cross and He paid the ultimate sacrifice because blood must be paid for sin. And He made that blood sacrifice for you. He couldn't just excuse our sin. But judgment had to be made. But instead of us bearing judgment, Christ bore your judgment. Christ bore your judgment and He paid the ultimate price on Calvary's cross so that not only would you die with Christ, but that you would live with Him. 
Because in that payment on the cross, it was not the end, but it was the beginning of our new lives. It was the resurrection glory that He gave to each one of us. The promise that we now live in. Paul wraps it up really beautifully because he shows us how this gift to us was given to us in our very baptisms. From Paul, Paul from Romans chapter 6. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. What a promise we have. What a promise we have that as God has placed His name on our hearts in baptism, that He has taken us sinful failures and sinful people full of excuse and full of failures, and He has exchanged it for His righteousness and His love and mercy. He has placed His name upon our hearts and our baptisms. And we know what that name is. Right at the end of our reading for today, it's one of my favorite readings from Scripture. Okay, I have lots of favorite ones, so, uh, but uh, that right there where God gives us His name. Yahweh God, I am, He says. And He put that name Yahweh on our hearts. That name that is not only a noun, but it is a verb. It is God who is doing, who will be doing, whoever has done before us, and who will be doing even when we die. It is the name that promises that each and every day that we will have life and He will sustain that life, that we will have His care and His protection, and that He will go to the ends of the earth as He did through His Son Jesus so that we might join Him in eternity. Oh man, that is what the name Yahweh means, and that is the name that has been put on each of your hearts. The name that brings promise. Boy, it's amazing what God does, isn't it? Taking us dead sinners, making us alive. It's amazing the way God took Moses and He lifted him up. Here, Moses, this guy with anger management problems. And He used him to deliver His people. I love it because you you look at this, Moses stops making excuses and what does God do? God takes Moses and, and He uses him to deliver His people out of Egypt. And not just in some small way, but with lots of miracles too. Ten of them in all. If that wasn't enough, God, when Moses stopped making excuses, He used Moses to lead His people across the Red Sea on dry land. When Moses stopped making excuses, God used that staff that Moses carried to tap on a rock. And out came flowing water to take care of His people. God used Moses when he stopped making excuses to share his law, to share his will with his people. The list goes on and on, doesn't it? You read through Exodus, you read through, through the, the Torah, the first five books, and you just see over and over again the way God used Moses, the way he used him as his prophet. And in case we don't believe it, in case you're not sure, well, right after he dies, this is the way his death is memorialized. Deuteronomy 34. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Not a prophet like Moses has been risen up. But we know there was one that came, Christ Jesus, but that is how Moses was remembered. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the God who delivers His people, who doesn't make excuses for them, but shows His love and compassion to them. You know, I have to wonder for just a minute here, what would happen if we stopped making excuses? What would happen if we stopped making excuses in our families, in our communities, in our world? How might God change the world? How might God change our lives and our families' lives if we stop making excuses? You know, I'm confident that He would do some pretty amazing things. I'm confident that He would change the world in amazing ways. And so I challenge you to put aside your excuses. But not just to put aside your excuses, to, but to, to put aside those excuses and go to the Lord in prayer. Go to the Lord and, and talk to the Lord and talk to, talk to Him about what He has in mind for your life. Pray that He'll give you the strength and that He'll send His Holy Spirit to help you to stop making those excuses. The excuses you, that have been holding you back. The excuses that, that have been keeping you from sharing His love, His mercies new. The excuses that have been keeping you from living such a rich and fulfilled life in Him. 
Put those excuses aside. Put them aside and just see how the Lord works. See how the Lord uses you. Moses wasn't expecting much, was he? Moses wasn't expecting what God did, but that's exactly what he did. He took a normal person, a simple man, and made him a great shepherd. Think about how the Lord might use you to change the world. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you have defeated sin, death, and the devil. That you have conquered it and that you have not made excuse, but instead that you have shown us your glory, your love, and your mercy. That you have paid with your precious blood so that we might have life eternal. Lord, we pray that as we go forth that you would take away the excuses that are in our hearts and on our minds. We pray, Lord, that you would remove those excuses that we would be bold to share our faith. And Lord, we even take a moment right now. We take a moment to lift up our excuses before you, to confess them to you. And Lord, also to seek your guidance. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Use us, Lord. Use us to be proclaimers of your love and your mercies. This we pray in Jesus Christ, our Savior's name. Amen.